let me say this. Uh, first of all, our, our relationship spans back uh, what, 15, 15 years. 15 years. 15 years. Um, and of course, I, I was in Houston, but it got received a call from the congressman's office. I knew he was going to be uh, in his district and just happened to be in Montgomery. Uh, and he wanted to come by. And, and we were happy that uh, he decided to stop by Alabama State University and, and just to rekindle uh, old, you know, old acquaintance and, 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 and catch up with one another has been, been a delight today. Yeah, I, I knew I was coming to Montgomery, and obviously he was a newly appointed president, and I like to know the presidents of the universities in Alabama. Uh, I serve on the Education and Workforce Committee in the House. I'm the only member of the Alabama delegation that does, and I like to have uh, relationships with the heads of our universities and colleges. So if it's somebody that's a friend and colleague, it makes it even better. I'm also the co-chair of the HBCU caucus, historically black college university caucus, and uh, this is one of the most renowned HBCUs in the country. So there are a whole host of reasons why it's appropriate for us to have this meeting and to rekindle a relationship that started back in our days in the state senate. Yeah, and we're we're, we're excited to uh, to just be here today, uh, and and particularly when you think about us uh, being 150 years old, we're, we're celebrating. Uh, the university, not you and me. Not, not, not <laughs> you and I. I don't even think we can combine that together. To make it. But, but, but the university celebrating uh, 150 years, and, and it's truly a critical time. And for those of you who've heard me, uh, we want to talk about 150 years forward, what it is that we do uh, to make sure that we are in existence for the next 150 years. And so uh, through this uh, relationship, uh, uh, particularly with uh, Congressman Byrne in Congress, uh, and all of his knowledge and, and, and expertise, uh, it definitely would bode well for the university as we begin to uh, focus on a new direction for the next 150 years. So we're just delighted that he's here tonight. I'm sure you've probably shared this, but what is your, your vision uh, for this place, you know, looking? Well, listen, this? you know, I, I keep getting that vision question, and I keep having to redirect individuals to let them know that basically uh, I have some idea of where uh, the university should go and where I'd like it to be. But, it, but to have a true vision, uh, it takes the collective effort of both the student body, faculty, staff, and all of the community stakeholders, even the congressmen, uh, to develop that vision moving forward. Uh, that, that's a vision that's sustainable, uh, because I can be here today and gone tomorrow. But the vision that is established by this university and all of its stakeholders is one that will be everlasting. There, probably, there haven't been a lot of legislators on campus, a lot of lawmakers on campus over the last few years, particularly white Republicans on campus. I guess what does this say? What do, I mean, to have Bradley Byrne here, what does that say about you know where you are, where you're coming from, the connections that you have? Well, you know, first of all, it just uh, establishes where we are as individuals because we're, we're friends. Uh, but we have a relationship and a, and a good working relationship, and that comes from our days in the Alabama State Senate. But it also shows that, I, as I've stated, that we can't function in a silo here at Alabama State University. And so regardless of uh, political affiliations, it's important that everyone uh, work together. And, and it also shows my efforts uh, in the Alabama legislature as Senate Minority Leader to reach across the aisle to uh, ensure that we find common ground on issues. And so. I think that's what you see in this union today, is in two individuals who have always worked to try to find the common ground to uh, ensure that everyone is represented and that we do the best for not only the citizens of the state of Alabama, but you know we're talking about the best for uh, students and faculty and staff here at Alabama State University. President Ross had a reputation in the Alabama State Senate of being somebody who, while he has strongly held views, knows how to work across the aisle, and that's very important. Uh, I had an experience uh, two years ago, I guess now, when Alma Adams, who uh, was a new member of the United States House from North Carolina, uh, uh, came to me and said, I want to form an HBCU caucus, and I don't want it just to be Democrats, and I need a Republican co-chair. Would you be my Republican co-chair? And uh, I was honored. I was a little surprised, but honored. And the work that I've been able to do with her and a number of us across the aisle in, in Congress working on HBC issue, HBCU issues indicates how this is the sort of thing that can, can transcend poverty boundaries. Mm -hmm. uh, but to, to drill down into Alabama State, Alabama State is an extraordinary important institution of higher education in Alabama across the nation. 
And um, it's important for everybody that this institution be successful. And I just said this to the president when we were in his office, and I mean it. I think he's exactly the right president at exactly the right time to do what needs to be done for this university and for the state. So he's, he's got me as a more than a willing partner uh, in the House of Representatives and in Washington in general to help him do what he's going to be doing for the people that, are, that love this university and the students that go here, which are at the very heart of what he's looking at. Congressman Burns, um, what issues have you discovered while working on the caucus? Anything that you all addressed today? Well, I think there are a number of issues that we're addressing in Washington on, on this. Um, I, I wish we had gotten off to a little faster start this year. We intended to. A lot of other things happening in Washington that I think have gotten in the way. But what we have done, I think, this year in Washington is we built a much larger group of people who have come to understand the importance of HBCUs across the nation. And so we want it very definitely to be bipartisan. We do not want this in any way to be a partisan issue. The president has spoken out very strongly about this, and I've encouraged him, I'm going to continue to encourage him, not just to speak, but for us to act. And I've talked to the Secretary of Education about it. Um, but I, I think doing what we can do in Washington to support institutions like this is important to everybody in the United States of America, whether you've been to one of these institutions, whether you're an alumnus or not, whether uh, whether you're a Republican or Democrat or whatever, the success of these institutions will play a huge role in the su success of our individual communities in the nation. And I just have to say, what, what you see here is, uh, you know, it's almost a uh, you know, picture of, of what you saw in the Alabama State Senate. Yeah. Uh, because uh, Congressman Burns, even then, uh, was willing to step outside of, uh, you know, whatever political spectrum uh, in order to have dialogue and, and to make things happen. And so I think that that uh, speaks in volume uh, with him here today, and we're reestablishing that. And, and while he's, uh, I'm in a different capacity, uh, and he is definitely in a different capacity in the United States Congress, I think together uh, we demonstrate that which is good for the state of Alabama and, and for Alabama State University. And so we're, we're excited about this, this opportunity. Being on that caucus, have you, have you learned anything about HBCUs that, that you didn't necessarily know before going into that, or anything that's changed your, your perspective of it? You know, there are some people that say here in uh, the 21st century, why do we still even need HBCUs? And this answer has come very clear to me. I had it before, but I think it's clearer to me now. One of the great strengths of higher education in America is our diversity. We're public institutions and private institutions. We're four-year colleges and two-year colleges. We're religious institutions. We're not religious institutions. HBCUs are a part of that diversity, and that's our great strength in America. That's why people all over the world want to come here to get their higher education. For many, many, many people in America, not just African Americans, by the way, HBCUs are a good place. Many of the people that come to these institutions are the first ones in their family to go to college. And I was the first one in my family to go to college, and we need a little extra help. And HBCUs get it. They, you don't have to explain it to them. And so when people finish going through an HBCU, you will not find a more loyal group of people. I don't care what the institution is. Sometimes I see them sort of getting around one another. Y'all have a little rivalry that's going right, on. That's right. Uh, <laughs> but Big that, rivalry. But that, but that loyalty and that love for their institution comes from the fact that these are people that needed opportunities, and their best opportunity was an HBCU. When you meet with all these HBCUs from around the country, which I didn't know before, and you see the breadth of what it does around this country and how many different communities and states have been lifted up by their mission and how they've accomplished their mission, you realize if we're going to move America forward, a part of that effort has got to include HBCUs. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Thank you. very much. Thank you. Good Thank to be you. with everybody. Some of you again. <laughs> listen, listen and, and, and I'd like to take this opportunity. Uh -huh. On behalf of Alabama well, State you. University, the Board of Trustees, uh, and the faculty, staff, and student body, we want to present oh, great. this Thank token. You. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate you. That's yeah, good. Yeah, indeed. indeed. Maybe I'll come here and come to a football game. Oh, indeed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, we, we, we have to put you here. Yeah. Maybe next year.